Hey guys, Soy here, and today we'll be going over how to get better at keystones as Rep Paladin, helping out your team in as many ways as possible. So for the example here, we have a 23 Everbloom, and I'll be doing a full walkthrough commentary of things you should be doing, looking out for how to optimize damage and help your team. So to start with, an example here is, um, see these little flower ads? So I began with freedoming the tank. So that actually removes a stacking debuff that goes on the tank, uh, lessening the amount of damage that they get. Um, another thing you'll look out for is I'll constantly be sacking, um, busting a sacrifice onto the tank. This is just to reduce damage that they take, and then I take a little bit of that damage um, just to help out the team a bit more. So we're going to this first pull. It's a big pull. You. Especially with Demon Hunter tanks, they have a little bit harder time getting aggro, so you want to give them a second to, to really pull those adds together. And then just start AoEing as much as possible, while also making sure to freedom the tank, and then sack the tank if you think he's getting low. And you could sack anyone else on your team if needed. Um, you see right there, I just flash shield the tank, help out the healer. Uh, also, you'll notice here on my frames to the left, uh, there is actually a poison that goes on, so that can be cleansed by uh, cleansed toxins. So that, that was like a huge ticking uh, time bomb amount of damage to the DPS. You can see it is spelled there. It does come out faster, so that guy died there because I was a little late in the first dispel. So it wasn't up in time to dispel him again. But I believe I'm tracking it a bit better now. Um, you can see it went out on two people, could only dispel one. Looks like the other was dispelled by someone. Uh, so these are just little things that you always want to be looking out for when in any keystone. Paladins actually have some of the best utility, uh, especially this season more so than most. There's a lot of poisons and a lot of dungeons. And uh, freedom is also something that's widely used for uh, several different mechanics within the dungeon. Not only help yourself, but your teammate as well. Um, and for this key, I'm running a little bit uh, defensive talent build to do passive healing just to help the healer out a bit so he can do more damage. Uh, Druid's kind of pumped right now, so if I'm able to off heal so he doesn't need to heal, you just put his hots on people and he can DPS, um, then that is key. So again, these little flower adds here, they uh, apply that debuff to tank, so freedoming. And then we'll just press through with the key. So when it comes to Rep Paladin, um, fortunately for us, we have a more simplistic rotation. So that does free you up to focus on that. So if you could have any takeaways, it's to track your teammates' uh, bars so that you can see if they need a freedom, if they need a cleanse toxin uh, from anything that can be dispelled, uh, or if they need sack if they're getting low. And then you also have land hands, uh, which I always try to keep an eye out. Someone's sitting at like 10% health. Healer's not, you know, topping them super quick. Might as well just lay in hands of them instead of letting them die. Also, you want to kind of preemptively pop your defensives. Like as you get low, you saw there I got low. I popped my, uh, sh uh, what's it called? Shield of the Vengeance. Uh, just giving the healer some time to top me off. For this part, really, you're just going for interrupts, so make sure you're interrupting on cooldown. Try not to overlap if you see someone else targeting a certain ad, you can always just focus a different one. I don't know if that was me that pulled these guys here to the right. It looks like they're running towards someone else, but um, quick recovery is, it, as you can see, they feared those other three ads to kind of group them in. You'll notice this at higher level of plays, like if someone makes a mistake, someone accidentally pulls extra, um, there's little things you can do with stuns, you see to kind of buy your team time to recuperate and you know gather up all the ads and then from there cc so i'm kind of on circle right now making sure they're stunned making sure he's gonna get interrupted uh, as my interrupt comes up cooldown actually below my health bar on the left there i actually have all of our team interrupts uh so you can see there to try to not overlap and you can see if you know something big that's important to interrupt is coming in and if everyone else's interrupts down you know you're up so uh, you, you always just want to be looking around. I know there's a lot to pay attention to, so you know you want to pay attention to your team, their health bars, your rotation, your cooldowns, 
interrupts, pre pretty much all that, and you're and you're positioning on top of that. So next with this big tree guy, uh, you actually do the majority of your damage um, when he's in his second phase where he kind of freezes up. So I'll try to hold my cooldowns for that phase so that that damage is bonus and we can kill the boss even faster. Um, and then for this guy, he does spawn quite a few adds. So when they come out, you can still stay on the tree ad and just kind of AOE cleave down uh, those other ads that get spawned. And you'll see that here in a little bit. With this boss, there's really not too much to it. Uh, you kind of just dodge that little blue swirl that, that just landed next to my left. Um, and then really the ranged are going to be the ones positioning those roots to block the orbs coming in. Um, so you can really just focus on DPSing here. Tank, uh, healer, really no one should be taking like crazy damage. It's really just about, you know, hard focusing boss when he's in this frozen phase. And then AOEing down the adds to make sure they don't get control. see here the healer is like absolutely pumping. Uh, Red Paladins are kind of notorious for not doing too good of uh, single target boss dam. But we kind of sacrifice a lot of our single target uh, when specking into AoE for keys. And that's fine though because we kind of make up for it throughout the rest of the key. But uh, you can just see how much damage, more damage, the Demon Hunter and Hunter are doing currently. Uh, when it comes to a boss and, and that's that's going to be a recurring theme for sure with with paladin as a whole um and then the druid's absolutely shredding because again there's not they're not much much healing to do here so he's really just focusing on dpsing as much as he can and then most likely just applying his uh healing dots on everyone So boss is down, we're coming up this way. There's a bunch more flower ads up here. So again, uh, you just want to be looking out for things that uh, freedom can help on. And keep an eye on the tank here, see when he gets a few stacks, and then just pretty much freedom will cool down. Looks like I got my CDs here, so we can start pumping. Uh, I will be coming out with a rotational video down the line um, for keystones and for, for raid, but um, won't go too in depth in it, but just remember to always be um, at Blade of Justice up so it, it drops that concentration. So then when you do Judgment um, or do Divine Toll, it will do that double tick with your core set. And that's kind of like the benefit of the core set here. Wasn't sure why we just kept DPSing those adds down um, or the ghouls, but. So we got some more flower rats coming up in here. Uh, you can see the tank got super low. I quickly lay in hands him. Um, I think I did it a little bit late. The healer might have uh, topped him before I did that. But again, you'll want to be free to tank here as he gets the stacking root debuff. And then just continue your normal DPS rotation. This dungeon's definitely very heavy in the freedoming compared to most others. A lot of times I'll just use freedom to uh, speed buff the tank so he can kind of like get ahead of us, get get those adds, get aggro before we come in and start slamming on adds. Um, these adds, you want to watch out for that spinning jump guy. He, uh, he'll go to ranged. Um, usually you should be safe. Uh, if you have uh, weak auras, it'll tell you like when he's about to jump so you can start preemptively moving. But otherwise, you want to stay out of that. If you get like double, triple jumped on, then it could be really bad. So it's best as tank to not pull 
multiple of those, uh, just for the healer and any ranged safe. We get a huge AoE uh, damage to us. Um, and again, my Divine Storm with, uh, I think the talent's called um, Lifeforge Blessing. So what that will do is just huge amounts of AoE healing. It's pretty much every time you Divine Storm, you heal your whole group for 2%. So I would only suggest this for higher keys if you really think the healer is going to be struggling, needs that extra help, because you are going to be sacrificing a little bit of damage if you take that. But otherwise, it's really good. And you can see my HPS here. Paladin is notorious for being lowest HPS in any key you do. So if you have like an Aug Evoker, plus you're running this talent, uh, your heals will be hidden hard, and you'll be saving the healer a lot of time allowing them to do more damage, so it probably makes up for like the slight damage that you lose, um, just for the sake of survivability. And then you can even go Devo Aura for like an extra 3% uh, reduced damage taken, but I would only reserve that for some super high keys that maybe you're a little scared that uh, you guys like literally won't be able to survive. Yeah, and when it comes to the Pally, it's always about positioning as well. You want to make sure your Divine Storm is going through the entire group, since it does do like a frontal. So you'll really be able to maximize damage based on, you know, making sure those Divine Storm tornadoes are going through as much people as possible. And then even getting Passive Cleave off the Spiteful too, um, just to get those down. Looks like the healer went down there. Anytime the healer's down, you always want to be self-healing. So you'll see here, every time I get low, um, I'm popping Word of Glory. We don't have a healer, so you want to top yourself. Um, staying alive is more important than your damage, because if you're dead, you're not doing any damage. So I'm constantly um, Word of Glory. I have my other defensives that I can pop. Um, but you want to kind of be spamming that. Building up Holy Power, spamming your heal on yourself. And once you're topped, then you can go back to DPSing, but if there's no healer around, or even if there is, and maybe they're not healing you like you think they should, you shouldn't really just be sitting at like 20-30% health, like expecting the healer to heal you. Just top yourself off. Um, even if they, you know, put a heal on you, it's probably not going to be their strongest heal. So, you know, they'll give you a little bit, plus you'll word a glory, and then you'll top yourself off. Uh, flash of light, generally don't do... Uh, there's certain talent builds where uh, you can make it like insta cast, but um, Word of Glory is fine, and it'll it'll take up some of that holy power, but surviving is more worth it. And you'll see throughout the whole dungeon, I'm constantly popping Word of Glory on myself. Anytime I get super low, just help heal her out, be self sufficient, and it's not like uh, sacrificing DPS, you know, to that point. I've I've three chested like 21 keys where I'm popping Word of Glory on myself and, you know, we still three chests it, so damage is not an issue. So little, little optimizations like that you can focus on at super high key levels where it's like, you know, you can go over that. You, you feel like you can't do that because it will jeopardize the key, but um, we're talking pretty high levels there to where it wouldn't matter. So right there, we're just deep in us thing, uh, that last spiteful down so, you, you know, healer can eat up. And then we're on the second boss. So interrupts are really, really important on this boss. And um, you really want to focus on a heal from that left ad and toxic bloom from the right ad. So again, like he's constantly casting things. And this is an issue I see with lower level players is they'll see a cast and they'll just go instantly interrupt it. It's not always about making sure you get an interrupt it's, it's about making sure you get it the right interrupt so toxic bloom being that correct one and then there's a little countdown timer for those pools that we drop so you just want to make sure you don't drop them on the boss directly um or else you know your melee dps won't be able to stand in melee dps the boss um i believe here in this part though we actually do miss a kick uh, i think specifically um i kicked something before that kind of like what i was talking about earlier and 
uh, one of the casts go off, but luckily we're all in good positions to recover. Um, but yeah, as that second ad stack on the, you know, this boss, you want to cleave him down as much as you can and get this ad down. Once this ad is down, usually the rest of the fight's pretty clean. And yeah, there's the toxic bloom going off, so we're all stunned. Uh, tank stunned, all bad positioning, hunter dies. So usually whenever someone on my team dies, I need a battle res, I'll insta the bubble and then res. But in this case, uh, we do have a druid who was able to get that res off faster than me. Um, since Pally has like a little bit of a cast time for theirs. But yeah, after that adds down, you're coming over to this guy. Here it's fine if you just straight interrupt. Uh, if he does pop his heal, generally someone's assigned to that heal, so uh, they'll be kicking that. But um, those casts anyway come up so often, they don't, they don't really do damage significantly. So you again just want to drop your pools outside of the group like that, come back in, and then lead down both bosses at the same time. Maximize damage. You can see Pally here has really good two car target cleave, which is why I'm kind of popping right now. Uh -huh. But again, once once that first adds down, this boss is actually pretty easy. It looks like I actually dropped the pool a little bit there, uh, top of the boss, which is fine because we do have the other side. So, but you know, if everyone's not doing mechanics and everyone's dropping pools right on there, then you know we'd all be just standing off to the side waiting for us to go away so we can melee again. So those pools do a ton of damage. So again, we all drop them outside of the group, come back in, keep DPS in the boss. So yeah, the second ad's dead now, uh, so now we're on to the last. So when we're at this part, really it's just that tank mechanic now, so it's super easy to just single target wrap this boss up i know this boss gives a lot of people difficulty and again it's two main reasons dropping those pools outside of melee and then number two is interrupting toxic bloom i believe this priest can actually uh dispel the heal if that goes off uh from the other boss but generally you'll want to establish before the keep and starts with your group say hey why don't you go interrupt the heal in this boss I'll get Toxic Bloom on the right side boss. Next is um, these Arcane guys. You, you always want to interrupt the Pyro, and they also do like a Frost ability. Uh, those are prime interrupt abilities. You can see Frost Bolt going out here. Um, they do a ton of damage to anyone they're on, and especially at higher key levels, they will one shot you. So you have to make sure you're not overlapping as much as possible and getting these down ASAP. Get low here, pop in some defensives. You can see I again word of glory instantly. I don't wait for the healer to get me. I just truck him down. Hunter died, so he, he just released, he's coming back. Um so we're gonna wait for him a little bit so he can catch up. Generally in portions like this as well, I usually look to sack a uh, DPS or healer, because tank is usually pretty fine, but uh, you always just want to be looking out for who you can sack, sack on and then uh, prevent that damage from coming in. So it looks like the hunter wasn't fully back yet. You're coming into this guy. Just trying to DPS as hard as I can, uh, especially on uh, Star. Tank pulls a little bit more adds. And this group's pretty manageable because it's just going to be that one interrupt. But uh, this is going to be for tank for sure. Uh, you want to look out to not accidentally pull um, a few of those at the same time. Because if you don't have a coordinated group, you're not like in Discord with you know your team. You won't be able to coordinate those kicks. One of those gets off. Uh, you know, could just one shot someone. Looks like Tank's typing out that he has darkness up in 45 seconds. So he might be trying to wait for that to come up for this next pull. Uh, this one's a bit dangerous because you have a couple of uh, casters here. So if, if you overlap kicks, it could be bad. So right there, looks like the Havoc and the Vengeance tank 
overlap to kick. And now my kick's down. Um, also looks like he lost aggro a little bit. So we got a cast going off, loss of aggro. Um, and that just like completely wiped the group. But, you know, if DPS is solid and you did the rest of the key good, one wipe shouldn't be a big issue. So we're all just releasing, hopping right back into it. We kind of realized their mistakes there. Tank, you know, didn't get aggro as well as he could have. And we missed some kicks. So um, if Tank's able to stay alive, you know, we'll get back into it, which is always kind of risky. Uh, if the adds are still healthy, which I think they were when we all died, uh, you might as well just die as a tank, reset. Um, versus keeping them alive, you know, those adds will cast on us as we're running up because they have, like, far range. So it's better just to reset. So I'll be resing them here. And then we'll try not to overlap kicks as well, as much and give the tank a second to get some aggro. There's definitely some tanks that are a lot better at grabbing aggro, so you don't have to worry about, like, you know, popping wings and just full AoE blasting, like, right off the rip. But uh, I know Demon Hunters have an issue with uh, pulling AoE aggro, so you always want to let them kind of gather up those adds and generate some threat before you go too hard. So here you can see your kicks are going a lot better. I'm getting a little low. Pop some defensives. Uh, I got a. Looks like I lay in hands the hunter there. So saw that he was getting low. Because again, if these casts go off, they'll either one shot or come close to it. Um, Spiteful got a few hits on me, which I probably could have done a better job running away from. We gotta kill this last one so we can res the healer and move on to the boss. Now at this boss, I know there's some coordination, you know, that can make it more optimal to where I don't have to do this, but generally if you look at the boss right now, that back wall behind her, um, that's kind of always where I'm running. So anytime those orbs come out, you just want to run as fast as you can. So the first time the orbs come out, you don't get pulled in. The second time they come out, you do get pulled in. And also in this fire phase here is mass amounts of AoE. So you want to make sure you have a defensive up for that portion. Or you just war to glory yourself to make it easier on the healer. Because everyone will be taking damage there. And the higher you go, you know, you can get one shot if you don't pop a defensive. So just DPSing hard here. Here come those orbs. So again, you just want to run through dodging them. It's a little close. I could see I was kind of far from the healer there because he ran back. And I went back opposite way, so that's why I self-healed myself where they're poorly. And then going back into damage. So now remember the next orb phase, there will be a suck in. So for this one, you'll want to make sure you're a little bit extra far. So they, they beat the orbs really well there, so I don't have to worry about it. Get pulled. Good. Back back to the boss. Yeah, so for this fire phase, I didn't have any defensives, so um, if that ever happens, you're on pal, you don't have defensives, um, and you know bitch damage phase is coming, what you'll do is you'll either ward a glory, or you'll kind of just keep an eye on your health bar. If you see yourself kind of getting to that 20-30% level, you'll just pop that heal. So these orbs again, you're not going to get pulled in, so you can play a little bit closer to them, and then keep damaging on boss. Orbs in. This time's a pull, so I go a little extra far, get pulled. Good to go there. Just make sure not to misclick any of your movement abilities, because you do want to save them for that part. So just in case, you know, you do get pulled towards those orbs, you have an extra movement or freedom to, to move out. Big damage coming out. So it is a good job, job topping. And this boss is pretty much dead. Last little ad group. These guys should go down quick. The 
Looks like we have lost off cooldown, so we're kind of typing out to each other. Um, and if you can't do comms, when you do get to higher keys, it is helpful to type to your team. Let them know strategies and stuff like that. So this, this last boss here, I typed to them uh, before we even started the key. Essentially saying, hey, like we need to focus the ad. And something else that I did not know is running up here. Um, you don't want to go in through the portal before the rest of your team. Because I guess the boss can do a frontal. Um, and he'll pull aggro automatically after his RP. So if you actually go in early before your team, you can turn around frontal the group as they're just trying to run in. Because there's like this one little corridor. Um, so that's something new I learned from this key. Uh, and then you can see my team was typing to me like, you know, what are you doing? Because I was supposed to wait for uh, everyone to come in at the same time. So around this boss, you can see I'm heavily holding cooldowns. And I believe I did this because I wasn't confident that people would fully single target switch to the ad. So a lot of times, like here, you know, people will just cleave. They'll, they'll focus the ad, but they'll still be doing like kind of AoE. Um, this ad requires full single target. So when he's out, we reduce damage on the boss. Um, he needs to be bursted down ASAP. And then we need to soak these flowers. Um, I believe I try freedoming a teammate so they can get a movement speed. Uh, so they can smoke more flowers. But pretty much priority number one is saving cooldowns for that. So you can see my trinket at the bottom right. Uh, I still haven't popped that because that does quite a bit of single target damage. So I'm saving that again for the ad. Pumping boss during the burn phase. So when that adds not up, you do bonus damage. Adds out, full switch, full single target. And you can kind of see as Rhett, um, your your wings will come up every time the ad comes up. So you can be that one uh, making sure that ad gets down like ASAP. So just imagine if this was a tyrannical key, like we're over here running towards the flowers and the ad's still up. The ad does massive AoE burst. Um, every second he's up. So if if you you're going out getting flowers, he's super healthy still. You you haven't killed him. Um, likely you know it's gonna be really stressful on the healer, or you're gonna die. So you want to make sure you save CDs for him. And it depends on your CD timings as well. And if you do decent damage without CDs, you know you can just single target. But I just make sure to not not be cleaving full single target and. Uh, I'm fine, you know, saving my CDs because they kind of line up exactly when they come in. So then my team will be the ones doing more damage because they get the bonus damage. They'll have CDs for, for the boss um, bonus and I'll be the one to, you know, burst down that ad ASAP. Freedoming, soaking flowers. Boss is starting to get a little low. So we most likely will have only one more ad phase. Uh, there is AoE burst when you, um, the boss does that frontal, so if you have a CD, you can pop it there. Um, if you want to kind of cycle two CDs, it'd be you know one for that slam, and then one for when the ad's up, because he does his taking AoE. And that'll be definitely more important on Tyrannical Week, but this is a fortified key, so you won't do as much, but you can see how much damage they do just you know on a 23 fortified, so you can imagine Tyrannical is going to be... Like double that. Hunter goes down. So I quickly res him as quick as I can. Soaking up the flowers. Boss is pretty much dead here, so um, I think we missed like one flower in the back, and I was like, oh, it's fine. Because we can we can burst down this ad, you know, before that, that ad becomes an issue. But yeah, we did really good on time. Even with a full wipe on the ad group, we still like come pretty close to two chesting. Um, solid key, solid group, went really smooth. Uh, tank had really good pulls and we kind of coordinated CDCs well without being in comms. And yeah, that's gonna be it for my walkthrough video. If you have any questions, post down in the comments, and I'll see you next time.